Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first in what I hope will become a series of Q&A videos. I've been very excited to do this for a while now, and I'm thrilled to get the chance to do it. Uh, but right out of the gate, I do want to say that I have been absolutely blown away by the amount of support that you have all shown me uh, for my Patreon. I'm still kind of reeling from just how much love has been sent there. Uh, words don't really do justice, but I am incredibly grateful for both the support and the faith that you show in what I do here and in the channel uh, by supporting it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who wrote in with questions for this video, either in the comments or on Twitter. They were all excellent. I had a ton of fun coming up with these answers. So without further ado, let's jump into them. What army do you play and why? Currently, my only functioning army is a Horus Heresy Alpha Legion force. Why is because they are my favorite legion and goddamn do I love me some mutable tactics. Um, after the Heresy campaign day I'll be playing later this month, I've got plans to start an 8th edition uh, Adeptus Mechanicus force because sweet damn I do love the Adeptus Mechanicus so much. They really embody that grim insanity of the 41st millennium, and their miniatures are just off the chain awesome with a ton of conversion potential. And it's letting me work up my fluff as well, work uh, some fluff into the army in a very fulfilling way. Um, to expand on this question a little bit further, I started way back in the day with a third edition Dark Eldar army, um, purely because they looked really cool to 13-year-old me, not because of how they played, which in third was terrible. So I immediately went over to Space Marines, as anyone starting out in the hobby will do, with a small Salamander's army, and from there, uh, Necrons, when they got their third edition codex. Um, it was the latter, actually, that got me back into the hobby after a very long fallow period throughout most of my teens, um, when their fifth edition codex dropped. Uh, but unfortunately I had to sell that army when I emigrated. So the Alpha Legion and my planned 8th edition Mechanicus are my third big return to the active hobby, as opposed to just keeping up with the lore, and I have been absolutely loving it so far. Who do you think is the most interesting Primarch, and why? I kind of love this question because it's changed for me so much over the years. If you'd have asked me the same before I'd read the Horus Heresy series, I'd have given you a completely different answer, and even now it's hard for me to actually nail down. Uh, my immediate answer would be due entirely to my 20th Legion bias, and that's Alpharius and Omegon. The revelation of the twins' existence in Legion by Dan Abned blew my goddamn mind when I read it, and I love the idea of how their completely mercurial nature and just overall kind of pragmatic characterization kind of sets them aside from the brothers. I'm also a fan of any kind of fictional character who mainly deals in the importance of information as both a tool and a weapon, so that works for them and as a runner-up, Magnus the Red, because as a history grad, I love his whole thing with knowledge and education, learning and preservation of all that, and I also appreciate the Greek tragedy of his total hubris. Um, on a final note, I will say that the Heresy series has made me appreciate the Khan far more than I ever thought possible, and that is entirely down to the incredible work Chris Raitt has done with his White Scars books. Do you work in radio or other broadcast media? Nope, neither, uh, but I am in publishing. My media experience such as it is comes from a string of podcast passion projects that never really took off but were a ton of fun to do regardless. So that was all just practice for something that eventually does, which is kind of this channel. Occasionally there are wee audio hiccups in your videos as if there was meant to be a cut. Do you leave these in on purpose or is it a case of not noticing them? Any hiccups are fully just mistakes because I am terrible at this. Favorite traitor and loyalist legions. Uh, favorite Traitor Legion would be the Alpha Legion. Favorite Loyalist Legion, also the Alpha Legion. No, I'm just kidding. Favorite Loyalist Legion is the Salamanders. What music do you use for the background of your videos? Because I needed cheap, 
I used a collection of public domain choral music by a group called the Tudor Consort. Uh, if I can find the link, I will post it in the description. If you generally want some good choral music, I'll link a couple of my favorite Spotify playlists below too. Which of the Gloriana class flagships of the Primarchs do you personally like most? Since in capability terms they're broadly the same, differences do exist and will be covered in a later video, I'm going to make this call on style alone. Uh, it's hard not to love the sheer blunt perfection of the name Iron Blood, so I gotta give this one to the 4th Legion. Any advice for someone that's been thinking of starting a heresy army? If you want to do it from a purely collecting, painting, and modeling point of view, just pull that trigger regardless. Like, there's nothing stopping you. If you want to do it for gaming, I'd kind of check in with your local scene to find at least a few active heresy players. I know the game's taken a bit of a hit since 8th edition came out and everyone's been going in on that, but I think the overall compelling nature of the heresy and the kind of almost historical wargaming quality it has to it, not to mention the balance, might, you know, keep an active community going for a while longer. Uh, in terms of actually picking which force, just do what you do with 40k and pick the one you love the most. All the legions are viable in their own kind of way, so just go with what you love. Start with a bunch of plastics. The Calth and Prospero box sets are your just your best friends in that regard. Um, the 40k Rhinos and Predators are Mars pattern and were active during the Heresy, so using the plastic kits for them is fine. You don't necessarily need to worry about getting the Deimos pattern ones. Figure out how you want to play your army from there, and then make your first Forge Wall picks based on your playstyle. Contemptor or Leviathan Dreadnoughts are always a solid choice, and the kits are just fantastic. But if you're feeling lavish, you can't really go wrong with one of the flyers for the Legions. Uh, that's an incredibly broad overview. If you want more detail, check out the excellent 1D 4chan Legion Army List page, link in the description. What was your motivation to start this channel? I've kind of touched on this before, but I get to go into more depth here. It really comes down to two broad factors. Firstly, I started this channel during an extended period of unemployment while I was waiting for my Canadian permanent residency to get approved. Because I was just in a period where I had nothing to do, I didn't want to just sit around, so I resolved to teach myself the Adobe Creative Suite to buff up the old resume during this downtime. But just aimlessly faffing around on this is not the best way to learn new skills. I'd seen myself improve a whole lot with InDesign by simply giving myself an actual task, in that case making a series of fictional magazine layouts from different design eras, so I needed a coherent creative project for both audio and video. I'd done podcasts in the past and wanted to take a crack at YouTube, which I was spending a lot of time on, looking up tutorial videos and the like. 40k lore videos were always sneaking into my recommended tabs purely based on my search history, and while I respected the hell out of the creators who had built their channels on them, I couldn't help but feel that they were lacking a bit given the richness of the subject matter. I was at the time marveling at the amazing work people like Captain Christian or the Nerd Writer do with their very coherent, tightly edited video essays, so I wanted to see if I could make something akin to their stuff, but for Warhammer taking the lore and making video lectures that weren't just static images with audio that doesn't sound like it's coming from a laptop microphone. Um, adding in the atmospheric flares like the choral music and the remembrance of character were kind of natural progressions, and I've really been thrilled with how well people have taken to them. What got you into Warhammer, and how were you introduced to it? I was 13 years old, and a friend of mine at school gave me an issue of White Dwarf that had the Index Astartes Night Lords written by Phil Kelly. While the images of the miniatures were incredibly cool and the battle report was tantalizing, that one Index Astartes bit was absolutely dripping with sheer gothic nightmare, and I was immediately hooked. I've always been one to adore and devour well-built worlds, and here was one that was dark and violent and badass, and all of those things that a 13-year-old finds stupid cool. Warhammer represented something of a nexus of all of these interests that I had combined. As a kid, I'd loved building models and Lego, and when I was older, I discovered science fiction and relentlessly tracked down every universe and franchise, and devoured every scrap of lore I could about them. By the time I found Warhammer, my treasured copy of the Star Trek Encyclopedia was about five or six years old and beaten up beyond all recognition from reading and rereading, and the Star Wars Essential Guide to Droids was even more so. And here, right here, was something that combined the hobby of building classic soldiers and tanks with an insanely grim and rich narrative universe behind it. So just immediately hooked. Which Primarch deserves the most head pads? 
As far as my personal opinion goes, the Khan is one of the only ones from that particular family who wasn't a total ass and didn't let the heresy make him go pants on head insane, so he's my pick for that. What other 40k community videos and content creators do you enjoy? The list is a bit long, but I'll start off by saying hats off to the Games Workshop Warhammer community team for entirely turning the company's social media and customer outreach methodology around. Even aside from the wonderful videos they started doing responding to leaks, stuff like the painting tutorials are consistently excellent and engaging. It gets said a lot these days, but if you'd have told me five years ago that I'd eagerly be watching and indeed praising Games Workshop web content, I'd have called you crazy. But man, have those tutorials ever just helped me improve my own hobby work. Beyond that, it also goes without saying that Alpha Busa and his crew creates, hands down, the best 40k fan content out there by a college mile. The Text to Speech series has a wonderful Mystery Science Theater 3000 vibe of, yes, making fun of the sheer absurdity of the 40k universe, but doing so from a place of deep love for and understanding of the source material. And one that only gets better the longer you've been in the hobby. Yes, of course Vulcan wants to boop the snoot of a Katachan barking toad because that makes perfect in-universe sense and is goddamn hilarious besides. It would also be remiss of me not to give one hell of a shout out to Richard Boylan for his Hell's Reach adaptation. Finally watched the first part of that full movie and man it gave me literal chills. Just amazing work. What Warhammer book is your favorite? If we're talking Black Library, it's a hard choice since I've worn the spines of some of those books down to dust. Bolter to my head, Titanicus by Dan Abnett. Not only does it give a crazy amount of depth to the Adeptus Mechanicus through an amazing array of really distinct characters, but it's also pure blockbuster action in a way that you could never likely capture in another medium. It's a wonderful example of how damn good writing also just can make you feel as excited, or in some cases more so than just seeing a movie, and just keep you turning page after page. Very close runners-up would be Abnett's Eisenhorn trilogy and Aaron dembski bowden's Night Lords trilogy. Yes, I am counting three books as one in both of those cases, but I'm a big fan of tight, character-driven plots, and both of these have well-written, well-developed characters in spades, and really flesh out parts of the 40k universe that we don't tend to see that often. Are you ever interested in doing Age of Sigmar lore if it really starts taking off? While I've not yet dipped my toe into Age of Sigmar from either a hobby or a lore point of view, from my perspective it has taken off already. The start may have been a little bit rocky, but the sales figures have been good, and I've been loving the minis that they've been putting out for it. I mean, embracing that cartoon high fantasy element was a bold choice, but it was also something of a natural step. And it's really paying off, both narratively and artistically. I've not yet read much of the lore, but it's there waiting for me when I feel up to it, and those Caradron overlords are insanely tempting right now. As to where or if it will be covered on the channel, I'm sure I could ultimately work it in if there's demand, so let me know. What is the greatest inspiration for your choice of music? I've always mentally pictured Terra and the various holy worlds of the Imperium as having a constant kind of devotional choir singing hymns of praise to the Emperor. 40k borrows a lot of its aesthetics from the gothic medieval and takes them to cartoon levels of grim, and Gregorian chant and the devotional choral music that would develop from it really embodies that for me. To my mind, there's really no debate as to choosing what kind of music to set a lore lecture to. It's so much more evocative to the setting, personally speaking, than the aggressive and deep pounding bass horns that usually play over Warhammer videos. Warhammer is routinely the antithesis to subtle, so it's kind of nice to subvert that by adding in some subtlety. How's your miniature painting, and do you have pics of your work? Amateur at best, with a lot of lapsed years. I still need to learn how to layer properly, but I'm happy with the progress I'm making there, and also with my edge highlighting skills that my current Alpha Legion project has allowed me to get lots of practice with. The Warhammer TV painting tutorials, which I mentioned earlier, and the just amazing quality of Citadel paints have helped me improve my work in leaps and bounds, as has discovering uh, Tamiya metallic spray paints for the specific Alpha Legion project. I'm shooting for tabletop quality with them, but I'll throw some pics up on my Twitter feed, at ButtStuffKaiju, link in the description. Besides the conflicts in the Istvan system, what were the craziest battles of the heresy? 
I'm going to go with Kalt as my favorite. The idea that the word bearers would use a superluminal ship to annihilate most of the orbitals in Kalt near space is Admiral Haldo level cool. And reading about it in No No Fear still gives me chills. Xana 2 is also pretty damn amazing, and I can't wait to cover that one in a later video. I still need to properly explore the Talarn books, but they're very high on my to read list at the moment, and I imagine they will also be suitably crazy. Finally, I adore the Battle of the Alaxis Nebula, simply because it's really satisfying to see the Space Wolves desperately try again and again to bring a superior force down to their level of combat, and said superior force, ahem, Alpha Legion, Best Legion, denying it to them at every possible opportunity, simply because why would you ever get into close quarters combat with the Space Wolves? It's a great example of the 20th Legion knowing full well where their strength lies, and not giving the Wolves the satisfaction of getting to fight the battle how they want to do it. Do you have a particular favorite guard regiment, either from a lore or aesthetic point of view? Hands down the Death Corps of Krieg, because they combine both of those aspects. The history grad in me adores the whole World War I trenches aesthetic, and the Warhammer lore devotee in me can't get enough of their grim, suicidal devotion to what is literally the worst regime in human history. They truly embody the absolute hell that the 41st millennium is for the average human, which is exactly what the Guard is supposed to do. No genetic enhancements, no high-tech equipment, just a las gun, unshakable zealotry, and seamless indoctrination. They're like weaponized grim dark. What more would you want in a Guard regiment? In your second Raven Guard video, you seem to be implying as heavily as possible that the Karkaradons are the descendants of the Marines which Korax exiled with Arkas Fal, without actually mentioning the Karkaradons. In your academic opinion, do you believe this is true? Yes. The Karkaradons were a great lore mystery for a while now, but as far as I or really anyone can see, the latest implication from the Forgewell fluff is that they are a pretty direct descendant of the 19th Legion Predation fleets, even aside from the blatant connection that Arkas Fall, as a high up historical member of the Karkaradons and a noted Legion Master of the 19th Legion before Korax showed up, represents. I did not mention the Karkaradon specifically because they did not emerge into Imperial records until the Scouring at the earliest, or the Pentarchy of Blood at the latest, which is a bit more current than my period Remembrancer character currently inhabits. Sorry, World Eaters fans, they are no 12th Legion loyalists, just a bunch of spurned 19th Legion Terrans with a severe lack of vitamin D. Have you thought about reaching out to the wider Warhammer community? like Alpha Busa or Arch Warhammer. If Alpha Busa wants me on text-to-speech, he need only ask because that would be a literal dream come true for me, and you should all annoy him on Twitter and his comments until he does so. As for Arch, I doubt he even knows I exist. I respect the hell out of the channel and community he's built, even if he goes about it in a much different way than I do, both stylistically and regarding our content schedules. But I never say never to this stuff, especially when it comes to building bridges and ensuring that the community can be broader and more inclusive of all types of content creators. I'm very new at this, so any ideas you all have for what kind of collaboration you'd like to see, I'd love to hear about them. And obviously any shoutouts you want to give me to any favorite community creators go a long way to helping make that happen. What do you think of the Ultramarines? You will find out real soon, but on a personal note, I was never anything more than meh on them until No No Fear was released and entirely changed that. Bro, update the Legio Custodes video with the Solar Watch and Shadow Keepers. If I push into the modern or present timeline of Warhammer lore, believe me, the Custodes will be a priority. Codex Adeptus Custodes was a delicious tome to pour over, and it got me hankering to work on a small Custodes detachment for my 8th edition Mechanicus army. Where are you from? The accent sounds a bit Irish. Born and raised in Dublin, now living in Toronto. The accent is the result of an Irish origin coupled with a few years living in North America. Will you be changing your Twitter handle? Absolutely not. What do you listen to while you paint? Black Library audiobooks do in a pinch, but I genuinely like non-fiction stuff so that I can kind of learn while I work on my minis. I'm also a big fan of podcasts, and as they go, I'm a huge fan of the Comedy Button, which is always fun to work with, 
And I find that Welcome to Night Vale and Sayer by Adam Bash vibes really well tonally with the kind of work. So those are my recs. Who do you main? Diva all the way, but I'm a flex tank, and since I'm Irish, I gotta stand for Moira. Also in desperate need of Overwatch friends in general, hint hint. Where do you want the channel to go from here? Obviously, the next milestone is 10,000 subscribers, and at the rate they're rolling in, we just might do that. As far as the future goes, one of the things I'm very wary of is turning the channel into some kind of uh, content factory that I've seen, you know, plenty of examples of being on YouTube. While, yes, catchy thumbnails and SEO-friendly titles are part of any YouTube creator's bread and butter, and I am as guilty of this as the next man, I don't want to be pumping out daily videos with eight minutes of waffle, padding out two minutes of actual lore, with a title card including, you know, three question marks or what have you. This is in no way trying to bash people who do. We all gotta eat, and if you're good at it, I have a ton of respect for you for making something out of what you got and your skill at doing it. But this channel for me is a passion project done out of love for the hobby and love for the universe, not out of wanting to make as much as possible from the algorithms inherent in the platform with videos and titles that clash with the channel's overall feel and kind of stated intent. This isn't to say I won't expand out into different forms of content beyond the Remembrancer records, but those will always be my focus and where the vast majority of the channel's work will go. In terms of what I will actually be covering in the future, the Heresy will remain my focus for a while, but Xenobiology videos are on the way, as are videos covering the Night Houses and the Early Mechanicum. There will also be more narrative stuff too, chronicling the Heresy itself as it unfolds. Further afield, I fully intend on moving into the present Warhammer 40k timeline eventually, and there's some really exciting stuff happening there that I'd love to cover. Always, as always, sound off in the comments if there's something you are just itching to see covered, and I promise I will take it under consideration. So this video has been a ton of fun to do, and thank you to everyone who hit me up with these excellent questions. I'll hold off on making another one of these for a while, so for now it will be back to your regularly scheduled records. Next up, the bloody 12th Legion and all of their sweet, sweet chain axes. So until then, uh, you can find the neglected but soon to be revitalized Oculus Imperia page on Facebook. You can hit me up in the comments here or on Twitter, where I am at ButtStuffKaiju, not changing the name. And you can also subscribe to my Patreon if you feel like throwing me a buck or two for the work that I do. As always, share any of my videos with the people that you think would like them. That always helps. But until next time, Ave Imperator, Gloria in Excelsis Terra. <laughs>